So I'm going to go out on a limb and kind of just attempt to make a video without having a fully thought out topic ahead of time. Um, last time I made a video, it was kind of very specifically targeted towards, oh, I'm going to make a sigil like in real time in fireworks. And that was fun. But I guess I haven't really showed my face on YouTube recently. So it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm three years into my transition. So looking a little bit better. Um, sometimes when I feel like trying, my voice sounds a little bit better than what I used to sound like. I actually rewatched my, um, <laughs> high school valedictorian speech earlier today. And I was like, wow, my voice was like pretty deep sounding in that video at least. So even though I kind of give myself shit of, oh, I don't really sound all that feminine, like, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not doing a great job, but then I sort of go back in time and think, actually, I'm doing pretty okay. And I certainly don't look like I used to anymore, which is good. I'm not really a fan of how I used to look. I feel like I looked kind of awkward and just, eh, it wasn't, it wasn't me. This, this is more me. So, and obviously me is a work in progress, but. So yeah, I guess in my last video, I talked a bit about my my latest endeavor of running a Discord server. And I didn't, I had to rewatch part of the video because while I made a fucking 50 minute long video, I shouldn't do that again because who the fuck's gonna watch a 50 minute long video? Um, so I did talk a little bit about it, but I feel like it was kind of tangential to, oh, this is why I'm making a sigil because somebody in my server asked for it. I actually haven't, I got kind of burned out on the sigil making, so I haven't done it recently. Um, part of it is also that the computer I was doing it on is super old. It's like five years old now. I got it November 2000, uh, 2014, so that that is actually five years ago. Um, and the, the thing ran like crap lately because it it has a hard drive and hard drives are really slow and everybody's got, you know, fast SSDs nowadays. So yeah, just using that computer in general is a pain. And so it required significant mental effort for me to be like, okay, so I got to do the whole, uh, that, that whole process of getting the computer started and waiting for it to do its its thing, which sometimes takes up to 15 minutes, and just experiencing lag and frustration in general. So, I mean, that's another reason why I haven't been using it. So anyway, I actually got a new computer uh, a few days ago. Um, I guess it's uh, technically made by Lenovo, but they have their own specific gaming brand, like everybody. It's trying to sound fancy and intense. So... Uh, I guess their gaming brand is called Legion, but I was at Costco and I, I, I walked past the display they had set up with the computer on it. And I was like, oh shit, that looks really awesome. I want this. <laughs> and like the price was pretty reasonable too. It was like 1200 bucks, which I tend to not like spending more than about a thousand give or take for, for a computer just because like computers get outdated and fairly short order. So I just, it's kind of wasteful to spend two or $3,000 on a computer in my opinion. Um, so like around a grand is kind of the sweet spot, especially considering that, um, I mean, hell we pay a thousand dollars for a fucking phone nowadays, which is kind of ridiculous, but I've been doing it myself. So <laughs> I can't really criticize that too much. So anyway, I got a new computer. Um, and I'm, currently recording on it right now. And I dug out my my Logitech uh, 1080p uh, webcam. What's it called? C922 Pro. <laughs> I literally just had to look at the screen because I'm using their, their app for recording it. Um, speaking of Logitech, I also got a keyboard and mouse combo to go with my new computer for um, mainly for the reason of I want to be able to sit in this room in the dark and still see what I'm typing or, you know, if I'm playing a game or whatever, 
Um, so I got, <laughs> I mean, if I was going to spend money on a light up keyboard, I figured let's just look at the gaming models of stuff. So, but as it turns out, that stuff is expensive. And so I literally got the cheapest keyboard I could find at Micro Center that was, that had light up keys because that's really the feature I cared about. So the keyboard I got was 70 bucks, which is, I mean, it's a lot, but also some keyboards there went for like $200, which is like, why would I spend that much on a fucking keyboard? So yeah. And then the mouse um, actually was marked down by 30 bucks. It was list price $80, but I got it for 50, which it's a pretty cool mouse. It's definitely a gaming mouse. You can tell by how smooth it moves and you can, you got a button on there. You can toggle the DPI. So like you can make it move faster or slower just by clicking a button. I guess that matters more for like first person shooter stuff, but I haven't done a whole lot of gaming recently and I kind of miss it. And I tried to get myself back into console gaming. Like I've got an Xbox 360 and an Xbox one and I, I went ahead and downloaded a bunch of games to them and like filled up their hard drives, but I just, there's something stopping me from like being able to dive into a game and I'm just kind of like, it's complicated, but I kind of think back to my, my days of literally spending an entire day in front of the computer and like not budgeting and just basically being hardcore addicted to games and I guess I'm scared of falling into that again, even though it's probably an irrational fear because like I have a job and shit, you know, I can't just, <laughs> I got responsibilities. I got my discord server to run as an admin. That's a lot of work. Um, so, so I, unfortunately I haven't done a lot of gaming recently, but here I am on a new gaming computer trying to <laughs> install a bunch of shit on steam it's kind of same song and dance all over again but it's a pretty comfortable setup minus the clutter on my desk that i need to do something about and the clutter in my life and my apartment and just cringe a little bit but so this kind of devolved into me talking about my gear huh i mean at this rate i might as well talk about my fitbit <laughs> i got i got a fitbit versa 2 which looks like an uh iphone watch but uh, can i can i get the screen to display i've got the pit boy watch face from it's like from fallout it's really hard to twist my arm in such a way as to position this in front of the the camera but i i kind of wanted to get better sleep tracking just because my sleep quality has been such shit lately. And so like I had this, this watch that I, I saw in a Facebook ad of all places, side note, I have, <laughs> I've actually bought a number of things from Facebook ads. So I would actually say that they're pretty effective at getting turnover. But anyway, I had a, I had a, a, a what do you call it? It was like a bracelet thingy that, tracked step counts and like supposedly tracked sleep and it was made by a company called Bella Beat and it's it's marketed towards women which I was like kind of jumping all over I'm like yeah see like I'm gonna prove to myself that I'm a real woman by buying something branded towards women I'm like that's kind of silly but I mean I didn't super think about it in those terms but that was a part of why I bought said device I had I had the bracelet thingy and then I kind of got tired of that and I wanted like a watch so they came out with a watch product which in retrospect was pretty disappointing like their tracking is not even very good so but the thing that kind of was the final straw was the the mechanism for how the battery for the device like is seated in inside the watch it's it's super janky like you take off the the back of the watch and it's it's literally just like a what is it a CR2032 battery the same kind you'd put in like a bathroom scale and it the battery doesn't really stay very well in there and so 
it kind of, I guess, got jiggled out of place and it just stopped working because the battery was like no longer seated properly. And I didn't feel like fixing it because it's a really big pain in the butt to take those screws off the back of the watch. Like they're really tiny screws and it's just, so basically, yeah, the, the watch stopped doing its job because the battery jiggled out of place. And also like I had dropped it. I had dropped the watch on my bathroom tile once and the, the not screen, but the glass had a big crack in it. And I was basically like, you know what? It's time to get a better device. And I just, I was like, I'll look into Fitbit mainly because I've heard people say that their, their tracking is actually really good. Um, so I just kind of pulled, pulled the trigger on getting a Versa 2 and it was like 200 bucks. It's not too bad. It's actually just a little bit more expensive than the Bella Beat watch that I had, but the Fitbit is like way, way, way better. It's more advanced technologically. It's, I mean, it has like, you know, a touch screen. It's, it's a smart watch basically. I've never owned one of the Android watches or the, I don't, I don't do Apple products, so definitely no Apple watch, but I've been enjoying it and it tracks my steps and it also tracks heart rate, which, okay, actually that's the real reason I lied earlier or I didn't lie. It was, I forgot as, as I'm talking, I'm remembering to myself what, what my thought process was. So, okay. The real reason I bought the Fitbit was because I wanted the heart rate tracking. And the reason that I wanted that was because my favorite running app, um, Strava, which I record my runs with on my phone, decided to be fucking idiots. And yes, I, I know this is like an intense accusation, but hear me out. So a running app, right, decides to just stop supporting uh, heart rate monitor chest straps which is like a core feature of the app as far as I'm concerned, because, you know, it's, it's pretty reasonable to give a shit about your heart rate. If you're a serious athlete trying to train for something now, I'm, I'm not currently what I would consider a serious athlete. I'm not really doing races. Um, I, this past summer around July, I finally decided to get serious about running consistently because prior to that I had, my running had dropped off to almost non-existent. I ran like once a week on average. Sometimes I went like up to three weeks without running. So I got like out of shape and I missed running honestly. And it's been good to get back into it. But, but yeah, I get an email one morning from Strava's like newsletter or whatever. And they're like, so basically due to a bunch of bugs that were too lazy to fix. um, I mean, they didn't say that, but that's the implication. They said, their official statement was something to the, along the lines of, uh, we're removing support for external heart rate monitor devices because they're making our app crash. And I'm like, I didn't have any problems with the app. Honestly, it worked fine. So that already smells like bullshit to me. But also, you can't fucking fix your app. You, like, you're basically admitting that you're incompetent at developing your app. And yeah, of course I'm going to be pissed about that. I actually do care about the heart rate tracking, even if I'm not a serious athlete anymore. I mean, it's debatable if I ever was, but, (laughs) you know, back in like 2014, I actually did a lot of running. I did like over 3,200 miles for the year. So, but anyway, that announcement pissed me the fuck off. And I was like, all right. So one of the first things I did was cancel my uh, Strava, (sighs) whatever the fuck it's called nowadays. I think they call it Strava Summit now. It used to be just called Premium, but then they then they split it off into three different parts and stupid marketing shit. So anyway, I my, my protest to this announcement was, oh, hey, I'm not going to give you 60 bucks a year anymore because fuck you. So, but yeah, I needed something that I could still track my heart rate with. And Fitbit actually does integrate with a lot of fitness services. So, um, including Strava and Runkeeper and a bunch of other ones, I honestly don't really care. I don't, I didn't feel like switching from Strava entirely because that's a much larger effort and all of my exercise history ever is there. And 
yes, I can export it, and I also have my shit in uh, Smash Run, which is a much better running app for analysis. It doesn't have like an Android app to record with. It relies on you using someone else's apps and synchronizing with the system. So I do like Smash Run a lot, but it's kind of a one-trick pony. It does that trick really well. Um, certainly has much better analysis features than Strava, but uh, Strava also keeps my cycling uh, workouts. I, I occasionally use my bike. <sighs> Unfortunately, it's been like at least a month since I've used my bike, and I'm a bit sad about that. And now it's it's gotten kind of cold outside, and I'm I'm becoming less motivated to want to just go cycling on a whim because I've got to put on more layers, like my hands and feet are going to get cold because <sighs> yeah so I haven't done that but point is I wanted to be able to record my heart rate while uploading stuff to Strava and Fitbit actually does that so not only does it continuously track your heart rate like right now it says my heart rate is 66 which is pretty you know I'm sitting down I'm not super exerting myself but it synchronizes with, with Strava. Actually, you can upload a run, and it, it'll use your phone's GPS to actually map out where you're going. And so it'll it'll record the run for you, along with heart rate, and then it'll upload it to Strava if, if you have that turned on. And I was like, yeah, I'm willing to use this as my, my new solution. And I've been using it, and it works pretty well. haven't really had issues. I had some GPS inaccuracy issues a few times, but I noticed that's really only an issue if I don't give the GPS enough time to actually lock on properly. So as part of my pre-run ritual, I've I've taken to using this GPS test app that tells you the accuracy of your GPS lock. Um, of course, right now it's it's not really working because I'm inside, but, oh, wow, okay. I'm actually impressed. I mean, I am sitting by a window, but the fact that it's getting anything at all right now is impressive. But what I usually do is I usually wait for the accuracy to dip to, like, three meters. That's as low as it gets, according to this app. Um, and once it dips down to three, I feel pretty confident that my run is not going to be like horribly horribly inaccurate so i open up that app and then i sync I, I go to my watch and i click on run and uh it this it like wait it takes a few seconds to connect to the phone's gps and when it's ready to go i just click record um but yeah so that that was the real reason why i got my fitbit but the sleep tracking was was certainly like up there as well and I get I get not enough sleep <laughs> which is why I'm tired all the time I mean go figure so yeah that I guess <laughs> this video kind of turned into just giving you a tour of my of my tech stuff here's my pixel ha 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 that's not the new one though I I'm holding off on getting the pixel 4 until there's a big sale like maybe Black Friday. Last year when I got the Pixel 3, actually, they had this promotion where you could get, like you got $200 off the phone price and then you got another $200 as uh, Google Fi like credit, but that took like three months to kick in. Still, it was nice. I, I basically didn't pay like my phone bill for two months because I've been using Google Fi, formerly known as Project Fi. Um, it made it out of beta, yay! Um, I've been using it for four years because I recently got a an email that was like, "Your five anniversary is here." Four years. I'm like, oh, damn, it's been that long, huh? I guess because yeah, like Nexus six P, Pixel one, <laughs> Pixel two, Pixel three. That that is four. That makes four. Um. But wait, but then there's the Pixel four. I'm confused. I guess, I don't know. I must have started, like, when I already had the Nexus 6P. Like, not immediately after I got it. I don't remember. 
I think I had it on T-Mobile for a while. Anyway, this video is getting, wow, I have hit the 20 minute mark, so I really should stop because otherwise it's just going to devolve into further rambling about unrelated stuff. And as it turns out, just by virtue of me talking, it turned into a <laughs> impromptu tech review. And I feel pretty good about that, honestly. I I haven't done a whole lot of like following tech recently, but I do still really like technology. I'm a gadget girl, what can I say? So yeah, I'll leave it at that. And perhaps I will stop this recording and then just suddenly record another video on a different subject because I seem to be a really chatty Cathy today. Anyway, thanks for listening um, and watching. Not the most interesting video. I mean, I've been told my face is attractive, but dysphoria is a bitch, you know? So anyway, toodles.